If you're from Texas, you know that you must remember the Alamo, but what about all the bodies of the fallen soldiers? Were they remembered or just forgotten and abandoned? According to a July 1906 edition of the San Antonio Express, teenage eyewitness Pablo Diaz recalled seeing a large column of smoke rising from the fort. He later encountered the gruesome sight of many Mexican corpses and then came upon the fort and the remains of the defenders. It was a smoking mass of ashes, grease, and bone fragments that gave off a sickening odor. Diaz claimed that there were about 200 bodies on the massive pyre. Another account comes from Francisco Antonio Ruiz, the alcalde of San Antonio, whose story appeared in a 1907 edition of the San Antonio Light. He was asked to help identify remains, and he also directed locals to gather wood for the pyre, which he said was built in alternating layers of wood and bodies. After the fires had burned out, anything that was left was reportedly buried in a pit nearby. Santa Ana ordered a more traditionally decent burial for fallen Mexican soldiers. Alas, the reality of war made that difficult. Ruiz claimed that there were so many dead Mexicans that overwhelmed locals simply tossed some bodies into the river. Cremation may not have been the only fate to those who died at the Alamo. In the aftermath of the battle, remains could have easily been passed over by weary Mexican troops. Santa Ana later wrote that he ordered the burial of 600 enemy combatants in trenches, though eyewitness accounts and the lack of an excavated mass grave make that hard to believe. However, there is some indication that the burials did occur at the Alamo. Recognizable human bones were later recovered in the ruins of the church. One set of remains uncovered in 2019 was even associated with pieces of wood and a series of nails, thus indicating a coffin. Although it is worth noting that burials happened in the mission before the Battle of the Alamo, there may have been remains of the defenders outside the walls as well. According to some Mexican soldiers' accounts, large numbers of Texians attempted to make a run for it once it was clear that the Alamo was going to fall, but they quickly met their deaths when they came across Mexican soldiers. If those recollections are to be believed, it's possible that these remains were forgotten amid the brush or became part of the masses of corpses buried or thrown into the river. Soon after the Battle of the Alamo left the fort and its defending force in ruins, the legend began to form. Davy Crockett became a heroic figure who went down guns blazing, though other accounts say he surrendered. Wind kicked up. One tale claims that William B. Travis fired off one last round after being struck by enemy fire. Another says that Jim Bowie, who was sick in his bed at the time of the attack, was able to at least verbally strike back at Mexican soldiers. A heavily dramatized and likely fictional retelling has Bowie informing one Mexican soldier, I shall never shut my mouth for your like while I have a tongue to speak. For many, whether or not these stories were true was beside the point. The growing myth of the Alamo held that the defenders were stalwart champions of liberty who stood up to the tyranny of Santa Ana and the Mexican government. So as the years went on, a site to memorialize the glorious dead was increasingly important to patriotic Texans. To that end, in 1918, two memorials were erected at the supposed site of the Alamo funeral pyres. Jose Esparza, also known as Gregorio, was in a difficult situation in the lead-up to the Battle of the Alamo. A resident of San Antonio, he was a seemingly normal family man who assisted the Texians in the Siege of Bejar in December 1835. By the time that Santa Ana's forces arrived in February 1836, Esparza and his family retreated to the Alamo. They believed that their past assistance to the Anglo-Texans could lead them to being branded as traitors. The family entered the Alamo through a small window in the fort shortly before the siege began. All of the members of the immediate Esparza family stayed in the Alamo during the battle, with Gregorio joining the fight by stationing himself at Cannon. He died alongside many others on March 6, 1836. His wife and children, however, were spared. Esparza's family wasn't universally friendly to the Texians, though. Gregorio's brother Francisco was serving as a Mexican soldier at the time of the battle. He didn't take part in the assault on the Alamo, but he was close to the scene. Francisco gained permission to find his brother's body in the ruins of the fort, and he buried Gregorio's remains in the Campo Santo, a nearby Catholic cemetery. About 600 to 1,600 soldiers under the command of Santa Ana were killed at the Alamo, though some estimates believe the total was even higher. According to eyewitness Pablo Diaz, the area contained almost 6,000 Mexican remains. He vividly recalled waterways clogged with corpses, as the number of the dead were so monumental that some were tossed into the river instead of being buried. As historians, as journalists, we prize the actual history. This gruesome sight of bodies left to decompose in the open was repeated later after the Battle of San Jacinto, which was fought near the future site of Houston on April 21, 1836. General Sam Houston led a force of about 900 against an estimated 1,200 Mexican soldiers. The Texan army defeated Santa Ana's forces and established the territory as an independent state. 
They also left the grisly sight of unburied Mexican soldiers scattered across the landscape, as Houston refused to bury any enemy combatants. Landowner Peggy McCormick went to the general to complain about the corpses decaying on her property, but she was met with only platitudes about the honor of owning the land where Texan independence was won. Houston also apparently wanted Santa Ana to carry out the dirty work, but the Mexican general wasn't about to budge, so McCormick and her sons were forced to bury the remains themselves. Some accounts of the Alamo claim that the ashes of defenders were simply buried near the pyres. But in 1837, Texan Lieutenant Colonel Juan Seguin told the Telegraph and Texas Register that when his troops arrived at the Alamo almost a year later, they found a large portion of the ashes still lying in the open. They then placed them into coffins and buried those in an unspecified spot. Multiple accounts indicated Peach Orchard as the spot, but none seemed to be able to give directions to the exact location. The burial place was so vaguely defined that it's caused consternation for generations. Later in life, Seguin said that the ashes his troops recovered had actually been placed in an urn. He claimed that he'd also ordered a statue open in what he called the Cathedral of San Antonio. The implication was that the ash-filled urn was secreted away somewhere in the Grand Church now known as the San Fernando Cathedral. In 1936, Texans claimed to have uncovered the ashes beneath the cathedral's altar. They reinterred the supposed remains in a marble sarcophagus that's still on display in the church today. But with all the confused history, there's little hope that we'll ever know if these ashes are the real deal. We thought maybe we hit something significant, but it's just a rock. Many accounts make it seem as if all the remains inside the fort were promptly cremated to ashes, but Santa Ana and his soldiers weren't quite so efficient. An open-air pyre of the sort thrown together at the Alamo simply wouldn't produce the same fine ashes as a modern crematorium. That's borne out by the eyewitness testimony. In 1906, an elderly Pablo Ruiz told the San Antonio Express that he saw recognizable bone fragments in the pile. It's also possible that some remains were simply missed. Exhausted soldiers could have easily passed over the bodies of defenders that had been left concealed by the rubble of the fort, which Mexican soldiers set on fire after the battle. Perhaps that confusion is why there were still skeletons to be found in the ruins of the church in 1846. That is, if the account of a sergeant named Edward Everett is to be believed. The existence of non-cremated human remains in the ruins is echoed by author William Corner, who wrote in 1890 that the skeletons uncovered at the Alamo were found alongside fur caps and buckskins. But was this a genuine find or just an embellishment? Teasing out the truth more than a century later may be impossible, but it's reasonable to conclude that not all of the defenders' bodies were disposed of on a pyre. In 1979, archaeologists working at the Alamo uncovered a partial human skull during the excavation of an 1836 trench. Researchers were able to glean enough information from the remains to wonder if they'd found a buried defender. It was determined that the individual was male and in his late teens to early 20s. Forensic analysis conducted in 2014 indicated that he was possibly Anglo, though the remains are missing key features like cheekbones and full eye sockets. In the decades since, the partial skull has been proven to be contentious. It may not even be that of a defender, as indigenous people who died in earlier conflicts in the Texas Revolution may have been buried nearby. It's estimated that over a thousand individuals are buried in and around the Alamo, including the remains of Spanish colonists, emigrants from the Canary Islands, and indigenous people who lived around the mission. This also introduces serious legal and ethical quandaries. If the skull belonged to an indigenous man, it would need to be returned to the tribe for reburial. Currently, however, the skull is in the possession of the University of Texas, and as of 2023, no DNA testing has been conducted. Indigenous people were more than a mere background presence at the Alamo. They were, in fact, the ones who built the complex, which was originally known as the Misión San Antonio de Valero when it was founded by Spanish missionaries in 1718. Some of the native people who lived and worked around the mission were laid to rest there as well. It's only been the last 20 years that Native American groups have really become involved in you know decision making moreover at the time of the alamo battle some of the mexican forces besieging the mission were indigenous men as well some of the dead on santa Ana's side were thus likely native americans who had already been hit hard by the effects of european colonization this is all to say that when it comes to bodies uncovered at the alamo some of them surely belong to indigenous people from a wide territory this is important to modern tribes like the tap Pelam, who want to ensure that their ancestors are left undisturbed while also acknowledging the diverse history of the alamo Tribal representatives have sometimes taken legal action to ensure they're consulted when remains are discovered. You might think that the effects of time and modernization have washed away any chance of finding something new at the Alamo, but while the crowds of tourists might complicate things, archaeologists will note that the site still has plenty of new information to offer. As recently as 2019, even more human remains were discovered as archaeologists surveyed an area ahead of renovation work. The 2019 discovery involved the excavation of three separate burials of a teenager or young adult, an infant, and an adult. 
Significantly, they were uncovered in what's now known as the Monk Burial Room and the nave of the mission's church. Though it's not clear exactly who was interred there and when they were buried, some have argued that the younger adult was an 1836 defender. The reasoning is that this individual was found with what appears to be the remnants of a coffin. That would indicate an Anglo, as people from other groups were more often buried in cloth shrouds. However, there's no indication that any dating or DNA testing has been done to more definitively link the remains to the Battle of the Gallows.